Hey ladies, hey everybody. Okay, this is going to be so different. This is going to be really, really, really different because, okay, um, yesterday I was up and I was, um, I was up until like probably maybe about one, two o'clock in the morning and I, I was reading my YouTube post and I started to go into the messages and I saw all of these private messages and I'm like, how come I didn't get a warning of these messages? And a lot of you ladies were reaching out. Some of y'all was like, Mona, I got some three-month clothes if you need some. Some of you ladies were telling me, look, Mona, be careful. One of you ladies wrote me a really long, I'm talking about a really long, um, I'm, it, it was so awesome. It just gave me something to read. And I just want to tell you, thank you. And you were telling me how you went through with your mother and um, how she had bipolar and then manipulating and all of this other stuff that was going on. I just want to tell you, thank you. I read every last one of it. Um, a couple of you ladies had asked me, Mona, why don't you d go do a GoFundMe page? And I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to do a... You know, I was thinking to myself, like, I don't really want to do a GoFundMe because... I don't want people to be like, oh, she asking for this and asking for that. I guess my pride was getting to me because I'm really used to giving to people. So it's kind of hard for me to intake. Also, too, um, I've gotten blessed with um, um, gifts from a bunch of you ladies out there. And I, I still I need to do a video that just thank you guys. One of you ladies that you know who you are. You're from Africa. And yeah, she sent you a box of diapers and wipes. And then um, I had another one of you ladies who sent her a, a beautiful cross. Um, and I just want to thank you ladies so much. So a couple of y'all were saying, Mona, why don't you do a GoFundMe account? And at first I was like, no. And then I thought about it and was like, maybe I should do that. What I would really like, you guys know what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to Fetch a dollar for the things around here. So I have a Kawasaki uh, motorcycle that has not that only has under eighty five miles on it. So I've been trying to sell that to at least make extra ends meet and extra money. Um, the notice that I've been given to to vacate, I don't know, is this month or next month. I don't know. And as you can see, I don't know where to go. But um, I have decided that I'm just I'm going to go and do the GoFundMe. But if I do the GoFundMe, then I'm telling all. I'm going to tell you ladies everything. I'm going to tell whoever looks at this video everything. Because now if I'm asking for help, and trust me, this is really the hardest thing that I've ever had to do in my entire life. If I'm going to ask for someone to fund me, I really honestly wanted for those who would do like fun or whatever, I wanted for them to at least be able to download like a free song that me and Matthew did together. But unfortunately, I can't find or my, my last computer is down. So I'm trying to get away. Maybe I can do a link so you guys can listen to our music because I really want to give back as well. But I have decided that I'm going to do a daily vlog and letting you ladies know the real. I'm spilling the tea. I don't care because at this particular time, when people do evil underneath underneath the table, I'm like, no, that's exposed. That's exposed everything because this is exactly what I am going through, okay? So I'm telling everything. I don't care if my husband looks at this vlog because right now he's out of the equation. I don't care if my in-laws look at this vlog because they are the reason why I'm in this situation. Um... So I'm just going to up and I'm just going to tell the truth and I'm going to put a link to the GoFundMe. If you decide that you want to do that, then thank you. But like I said, I, I would much rather <laughs> take on prayers. But I'm not going to shortcut anything. I have to tell you guys every single thing. Some of it's going to be embarrassing, probably to my husband, um... Maybe to my in-laws, but I'm not going to give any names, but I will basically tell you guys the story, okay? Hopefully, I'll have enough time, but um, I'm just going to put it, put everything out there. 
me and my husband, we met each other in 2010, 11. And as you guys know, as you ladies know, you know, my background, I did with property management. He was doing con concierge, but we were both into music. I was doing rap. He was producing at that time. So when we both got together, we clicked really good. And we, we did a lot of songs. And I'll also put the links to some of the songs at the bottom so you guys can listen to it. Well, anyway, we hit it off really good. And, um, you know, we were attracted to one another when I first met my husband and this is another thing ladies that I honestly forgot and God revealed it to me when I've been doing all of this prayer when I first met my husband he was in a producer group called the bipolar brothers he had told me that he was bipolar but I didn't think he was because I have a sister that's diagnosed with bipolar and a tad bit of schizo so for him to be so calm I didn't think that he was bipolar so, anyway, we hit it off really good. Everything was going good. We Then, we, eventually, we started to date each other. Um, so, when we started to date each other, you know, I was just telling him that, you know, I'm, I can't talk or date anybody that's unequally yoked because I'm not for that. And I'm not going to be in a relationship for, like, five years straight before we even decide to tie the knot. So, eventually, my husband gave his life over to Christ. And um, that following year, we got married, and we had an awesome, awesome wedding. Let me show you some of the, the wedding photos. <sighs> Sorry, y'all, my room is a hot mess. We had an awesome, awesome wedding. But before we got married, we had an awesome um, wedding. I mean, it was just gorgeous. It was it was really gorgeous. My bridesmaids were gorgeous. I mean, everything about this wedding was just awesome. You know, we 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 did it up. I mean, we had it. We did it on our own. Um, my in laws they did not want us to be married. From this is what my husband tells me, because when they first met me, they assumed that. Well, they told him they think that I'm ignorant, so they didn't approve because. He never told them that I was black. And so, you know, they walked in and saw these long nails and they assumed that I was just this rapper that um, they just thought I was black and ghetto. And Matthew was just like, whatever, I love her. And we went on and we got married. They kicked him out of his condo in which he was renting from them because they owned the condo. And they explained to me, well, we pay for everything. And I'm like, okay, so I had my own. I had my own house, my own this, my own that. So, anywho, um, we ended up moving about an hour out of Washington, D.C. We moved to Woodbridge, Virginia. And we got our own place there. And it was me, my husband, Matt. And we were still doing shows around that time. But we were more so feeling like we're married. And we were kind of um, we were kind of looking forward to um, settling down. What's wrong, Putin Day? What's wrong? We were looking forward to settling down and... Um, we we really wanted to have a family, you know, because we we just got married and everybody's like, try for a baby. And so we were in our one bedroom and we, we had our dog. And at that particular time, I got rid of my Camaro. So my husband was just working with the own truck. And so my in-laws were not happy that he was not, he married me. First of all, you got to understand, I had an all white wedding where everybody dressed in all white but only like five people from my husband's side showed up for our wedding. Not even his own sister because she had to go out of the country and do something, whatever. But anywho, um, the day of our wedding, my husband had already informed me that his father still did not want us to get married. So I already knew that, that they still was not into me and they did not want me and him to get married. So anyway, after all of that, we moved, we get our own apartment. They decide they come up and they visit us. And they saw that we were in a small one-bedroom apartment, but it was still doable. It was very nice. And um, after that, they offered, because we were only working with one ve vehicle, they offered another vehicle. And I was like, wow, because we borrowed that car. And for them to say, would you guys want it? We were like, what? So we were just so happy. Later on, um, they invited us um, down to their home and everything, which was, you know, nice. And um, they basically came to it with a proposition and said we were thinking that, um, you know, we were thinking about getting a property and we wanted to know if you guys would like to rent from us. So we were like, yes, cool. We're like, okay, bet. So, of course, they used a, a particular agent to find the house, which would be 
moi. And we went around, we were looking for, um, you know, a particular house and it was in a certain budget. And to me, I was like, wow, this, this is a high end, a high, high, high range thing to look for. So we ended up coming across, we went to a couple of homes, um, and then we ended up um, finding one place, but it was a short sale. So we had to stay with my in-laws for probably about a good two months. And then we found this beautiful home. And at that particular time, I was pregnant with, um, well, we lost our first because we got pregnant in 2012, the year that we got married. But then we had a missed miscarriage and I had to undergo a DNC. And we were so hurt. My When we told my in-laws that they were going to be grandparents, they were like, my mother and my, my side of the family were happy, but they were like, so then when we were looking for an, our, our home, I got pregnant in 2012 around and I was um, pregnant with my daughter, Melody. And so we knew that this baby was coming, but we didn't tell anybody until we were about five months pregnant. And what happened was um once we ended up finding this beautiful home in which we knew where the nursery and everything was going to be located um i ended up losing melody and and if you go back to my old videos you'll see me in the hospital when i'm crying that's when i really started doing my vlogs when i started crying when i lost melody anyway we move into this gorgeous house okay this house is in the suburbs this house is worth probably maybe six something or whatever like that and um it's pretty much paid for and but of course it's not in my name me and my husband we were just renting it from my in-laws i'm i'm spilling the tea if i gotta if i gotta ask for some help i gotta tell y'all the truth okay i got i mean i could write a book about this so anyway life is good because we're renting this pay for beautiful three level house, four bedroom house, beautiful backyard. I mean, center of you know what, and I'm furnishing it. And you guys see me furnishing it, buying things from the special store and stuff like that. And before all we get into all of that, in September before we before we even got the keys, because we got the keys at the end of September, I end up losing Melody. I lost Melody due to an incompetent service. And again, you guys see that in the, the video. Um, we had a trip when we went to London. I cried the whole time while I was in London. Um, I just cried the whole time when we was in London. I did not enjoy London. Would I ever go back to London? No. Um, but it was just something that my in-laws gave us a trip to go to or whatever like that. So I, I can't complain. That was my first time out of the country, but it was bad timing because of, um, I just lost our daughter. And I'm just going to give you a little history about my mom-in-law. <laughs> when I lost my daughter, we lost her September the 6th, 2013. They, she has this little get together when she likes to get the family and we all celebrate each other's birthdays and we she had the table and everything already for me and Matthew to celebrate our birthdays because we're born in September. Do you know that night when I was pushing our baby out, Matthew called and told her that I'm losing the baby and this, that, and the third, and we don't we're not gonna be able to do this get together party. And we were staying at their place. You know, she had the nerve to tell my my husband that your sister's going to be upset. And I wanted to say, I'm losing my baby. What you mean my sister-in-law is going to be upset because we're not showing up for grown people's birthday parties? Let me bring it down. Let me bring it down. Because when I go back to a lot of these things, I see how controlling and how sick some of these people are. But anyway... Um, so after that, we end up moving into this beautiful home and um, they put a gate back in the back for a solo. And so we are loving it. You know, we are loving it. I'm furnishing it in this house up. But at the same time, I could never feel like this is really our home because we were renting it. And the rent was dirt low. And when I tell you dirt low, my in-laws told me this and I'm telling you everything. They said that they are only charging us basically taxes because the house is paid up. So every six months, we would sign a lease agreement. And they said, we're not making anything up. It's just every six months, um, you would sign your lease. And I'm going to tell you the reason why I'm telling you all of this. So anyway, after losing Melody, I start doing my vlogs. And then we get pregnant two months after with Harmony. 
Everything is going good. We're loving the house. We're still going back and forth, celebrating grown people birthday parties because my in-laws and um, their family, they don't have any grandchildren. My my husband is adopted and so is his sister. Okay. So anyway, and I want it so bad to just bring a baby forth for my husband. You know, I just, that's what you want to do when you're married. You want to do that for your husband. And I just, you know, y'all, if y'all go through my, my vlogs, y'all know how I was feeling with dealing with my losses. So anyway, we get pregnant and we're pregnant with um, Harmony. Everything is going good. I made sure to get the trans I mean the, the transvaginal surplus. But when they check me at 14 weeks, my cervix is already open at 20 weeks. Came April, I end up losing my second baby in in our arms. Okay. And that was devastating. We didn't even tell my in-laws that we were pregnant. With Melody, we waited until we were about four months, and then a couple of weeks after that we lost. And when we told them we were pregnant with Melody, it wasn't like they were happy happy at all. So I vowed never again will I tell my in-laws about any pregnancy. That was just it and that was all. So we get pregnant. So we lose Harmony. They didn't even know we were pregnant with Harmony. I didn't even want them to know, but Matthew was so distraught, so upset that he went and he told his parents. Okay. So of course they show up, we're in grievance and all this other stuff. But for some odd reason, I could see a little smile on my mother's in-law's face. I'm telling it all y'all. I got to I got to tell y'all the whole story, okay? I can't I can't act like that these people are not doing this. I got to tell it all. I told you all about my my stuff with our baby. I got to tell it all. So, anywho, so after that, you know, you guys see that we went and we found um I found Abra Loopers. I found a lot of stuff on Google about an incompetent cervix. And women who um, suffered second trimester losses. I got rid of all my old friends. And I had new friends. And by the time, a lot of my new friends have even suffered a lo loss or have children. And just, uh, I got a whole new thing of friends, right? So, um, after getting my tack from Dr. Davis in New Jersey, me and Matthew in October after going to Disney World, um, we decided for our baby. We got pregnant. Um, in November with um, our baby, Symphony. And we basically don't say anything to nobody. They didn't find out until they saw the stomach. And now they were very excited. Then we tell them that we're naming our daughter <laughs> Symphony. Okay, now I should have had this ready. Because I want to read y'all this, this text message about um, our daughter, Symphony. My in-laws... Did not like the name. They first of all, just to let you know, throughout the whole pregnancy, they never asked me how I was doing with Symphony. They they never even acknowledged um my pregnancy at all. Uh, nevertheless, the daggone name. They they could not stand her name at all. And so um so they just was they was just like um really messed up about it. I mean, they sent me and Matthew a long, long message about Symphony's name. And um when I tell you they sent a long message about her name, they did not like her name at all and was like, You need to be you uh, we don't think that her name should be this, that, and the third. And I'm thinking to myself, like, who are you to say what you, um, what you, I'm trying to see if I can find this daggone message. I got to read it to y'all because y'all would be like, are you kidding me? So, yeah, they didn't like her name. So, um, and like I said, I'm spilling all the tea. So, I'm going to pull up that message, um, the next go around or whatever if I can't find it on this message. But, um, they didn't like her name. And um, my husband was just like, bottom line, this is what we're going to name our child. I've already, we already discussed it because we, we named our first because we love music. We fell in love with love and music. So Melody Harmony and we came out with our symphony. And you ladies that have been following me, you already know. Okay, so anyway, um, after all of that, um, we ended up having her. But before we had her, Matthew, his behavior started, my husband's behavior started to change. I noticed that his moods were up, down. He would cry sometimes. He would be happy. He'll be playing the drums. And then he started becoming over-obsessed with um, 
um, I wouldn't say blogging. Well, I want to say blogging, but he'll be doing like scriptural blogging, like over uh, obsessed, uh, obsessed with it to the point that he just was going like he, he was just going like uncontrollably going and you know, I'm pregnant. So I really wasn't paying too much attention, but I did notice it. So anyway, um, the day that I had her, which was July the 26th, 2015, um, me and Matthew was supposed to be going to church. But my husband, pretty much that day of church, decided that he wanted to leave me. Um, you know, I went upstairs, and um, to, and then when I came back downstairs, he was gone. And I'm like, where did he go? So I'm waiting, waiting. It's almost 8.15. He's not even there. So I'm looking for him, then I'm worried about him, then I'm like, what's going on? Anyway, I lo and behold, I go into the church, and there was my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, and there was my husband. And I'm like, did he really just leave me? You know, the word says that when you leave, you cleave. When you The, the Bible says that when you get married, well, the Bible says this, is that you should leave from your fa- your mother and your father and you cling to your wife. But this was looking totally backwards to me. And I'm like, why are they even here? They don't even go to our church. I didn't even know they were going to be invited. But before I went in the church, um, he had left his keys in the driver's side. And when he left his keys in the driver's side, I kind of looked in the car. And um, I'm like, you know, I'm looking in the truck like, I know he didn't just leave me. Let me just make sure this is the real truck. Even though I know it's the truck, I look in and I see that he left his keys on the driver's side. So I go in the church. And like I said, I see my husband there. And I see my 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 father-in-law, my mother-in-law there. And I, you know, at first I was going to sit in back because I was like, what's going on? Because Matthew... My husband had started to do other behaviors that was not him, that was not normal. And most people who are bipolar, um, they don't do the normal type of thing, if you know what I know what I mean. So anyway, so I go and I'm going to tell you something. This is really hard for me to even put it out there because I really, in a way, feel embarrassed and I don't want to make it look like I'm putting my husband down. But I was just given a notice to get out. <laughs> I've been given a a notice to get out, and I have pretty much nowhere to go. Yeah, I have other family members that I can probably bunk with, but like I said, I have a a, a 170-something pound dog down there, cats and everything, and I have this entire household that I have to get together. So I got to tell y'all the truth. So anyway, um, so anyway, when I go and sit beside my husband in church, he scoots over to his father, and I'm like, what's going on? He started breathing heavy, right? And I'm like, what is going on? So the lady proceeds to get up, and she's singing in the church, and he starts to cry. And I'm like, okay. So he's crying and crying and crying and crying and crying. And I'm like, all right. And I'm thinking, okay. And, you know, I'm trying to give him tissue, like, you know, here, baby, tissue. He don't want the tissue. He don't even want it. He's scooting, scooting closer and closer to his father. He don't even want the tissue. So I'm like, okay. So I tap him like, you know, you left your keys in the car. He's still not listening. And he's crying. So I know something is not right. Now, it was something that happened before then when my husband was not talking himself that I had to tell him, you ain't going to work because you not talking like yourself. So anyway, he's scooting closer and closer to his father. And, um, I just tell him, look, you left your keys in the driver's side. I'm out. Cause I'm like, whatever going on, your, your parents about to deal with it. So I get up and I go to the, my pregnant nine months self, get up and I go in the house and I get a phone call from my mother-in-law saying, Mona, Matthew's crying and you know, we don't know what's going on and, and he's, he won't get out of the first service. He's into the second service. And I'm like, well, maybe he's touched by the Holy Spirit because the lady was singing. You know, I know that that wasn't the case. I knew something else was going on. And she said, is there any problems at home? I'm like, no, there's no problem at home at all. So she's like, he won't even get out the service. And I said, okay, well, I'm on my way back up there. Bottom line, to make a long story short, my husband would not get out of three services, okay? The first one started at 8.15, the next one 9.30, and so forth, if you understand what I'm saying. At one time, I had this, he wouldn't even grab my hand to get up. Oh, when I left out, when I left to go out when she called me, my husband left his ring on the table. Yes, his wedding band. He left it on the table. So I'm like, what is this? So I pick up the wedding band, and I go on to the church or whatever. 
And like I said, he wouldn't get out. I had to tell my father-in-law, please lift him up. I need you to get him up and escort him out. It's like my, my father-in-law wouldn't even listen to me. Like, I know my husband. This is not his behavior. So he finally did that. And then my husband insists, no, I got to go back into the church. And he said something that was a mockery, but I don't even want to repeat it, okay? So they go back into the church or whatever. So it wasn't until later on, me and my mother, we were sitting, me and my mother in law, we were sitting in the car because he's still back in church crying and all this other stuff. And I was telling my mother in law some weird, some behaviors that I noticed in my husband that that weren't him. So anyway, we finally go in there when basically the church is over. Now they're getting ready for the Spanish service. So I walk up to my husband and I'm like, "Babe, what's what's going on? Tell me why won't you leave?" He closes his eyes and he's like. I just want you to know that we are no longer together. I no longer... Um, and I'm like, what? Y'all, this was on a Sunday. Two days later, I was supposed to be given... I was a scheduled C-section for symphony. <laughs> I'm like, say say what? And I'm like, babe, please don't do this to me. Because I'm like, where did this come from? Why is he talking this way? Please do not do this. And he's crying. We're not even crying. He got his eyes closed. Like, I just want you to follow God. And that's the way he's talking. And I'm like, babe, no. So now I'm just crying. I'm pregnant. I'm crying. I'm trying to hide myself because I don't want people to see I'm crying. And meantime, between time, my father-in-law is looking for the preacher. Because maybe the preacher can speak to him. Preacher comes over and he's like, what's going on? And I tell him basically what was, um, I said, my husband just told me that our marriage is done. And he says, what's going on? My husband says she's been unfaithful. And I'm like, say what? And he says she's been unfaithful. And I'm looking at the preacher and I'm like, what are you talking? I'm, I'm nine months pregnant. Like, what is he talking about? And I show the preacher our text messages of him saying i love my wife she's the bestest wife in the whole wide world i love my wife she's about to have symphony woo woo that that's my husband my husband just gives me compliments he loves me he kisses me he's just awesome but what's going on i have no idea anywho um when the pastor says, um, because he asked me, is this true? I'm telling him, no, he looks at the text messages and he says, look, um, before he says all of that, he lets my husband know that he got all of his emails because my husband has been like on fire for the word and just real hyper and manic and just sending out emails to everybody. But anywho, so right after all of that, um, you know, I end up. The, the preacher, he was just like, everything looks good here. And he closes his eyes and says, you're only looking on the outside, not the inside. I'm like, what? So I just started crying, bawling, crying, y'all. I'm crying. And I just leave and I jump in my car. And my in-laws are running out and they're like, Mona, please let us drive you. I'm like, no, I'm crying and crying and crying and crying. And I'm like, no, that's okay. Y- y'all just make sure Matt gets home safe. Just make sure he doesn't drive. So I'm crying and crying. I get home. I'm on the phone talking to my cousins, my friends, everybody. And all of a sudden, I started to have, like, Braxton and Hicks, they were getting painful. I call my doctor. Instead of my regular doctor being there, it's an on-call doctor. So, anywho, I called the on-call doctor or whatever like that and tell her that I'm feeling a certain way. She asked me how many weeks I was. I was 36. Seven, almost 37 plus 6, almost 38, and she tells me to go in. I grab all my, my bags, I put them in the car, I call my mother and tell her what's going on, but I think they're just going to check me. You don't have to come up. As soon as I go into the hospital, um, bottom line, I get a... Um, they, they monitor me, hook me up and everything. I'm walking around, and I'm thinking that the contractions are coming like every seven minutes or so. And so when they put the belt up to me, you hear the douche, the douche, the douche. You hear my daughter's heartbeat, the douche, the douche, the douche, the douche, the douche, the douche, the douche. And I'm like, excuse me, nurse. Is that is that my daughter's heartbeat? So the nurse comes over and she's pulling the paper and she says, look, I need you to turn over, turn over. Then you hear the douche, the douche, the douche, the douche. They say doctor's on the way. And I'm like, okay. Then they say, we're prepping you for an emergency six session. I'm like, say what? We're prepping you for emergency C section. I'm like, what do you mean emergency C section? We gotta do one now. She's on her way. I'm like, I'm calling my mother, like, mommy, get here. They're doing the, the C section now. So um now I'm I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm really crying because I was already in tears that my husband just told me for number one. 
He no longer wants to be with me. Number two, I'm about to have this baby and I'm afraid. And the whole plan was for my husband to be there. And now he's not even going to be there. So I'm bawling, crying. My mother's trying, coming all the way from Maryland. I'm in Virginia. Um, my cousin had already dropped her baby off and she's bawling. I'm on the phone with um, Anna. I'm on the phone with Marissa. I'm just crying, crying, crying. Everybody's trying to calm me down. And then I text my mother-in-law saying they're about to do a C-section. So my mother in law she runs all the way up to the hospital and i call my father-in-law because matt is with him and i'm like could i please could you please let him know i'm about to have the baby because you put him on speaker and matt's like i don't want to speak to her and i'm like babe i'm crying and he's like no he doesn't even want to deal with me and i'm like oh my gosh anywho after all of that y'all know i end up having a healthy my mother-in-law sat in on it she took a lot of pictures um, let me see if I can find some. Maybe I can show y'all some real quick. Hold on. Sorry, y'all. I'm trying to hurry up and race this clock because I have to explain to y'all the whole story or whatever. So, here are the pictures when she was born. I never showed them before. And I'm, and you know what? I am grateful that my mother-in-law was there to take these pictures because we would have never had the pictures. Um, you okay, Putin Day? We would have never had the pictures done. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Um, so, yeah, so that was the first time that... Um, my husband had his his breakdown. That was Anthony. And uh oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, you a little bit too hot. I'm sorry, mommy was trying to bundle you up, but you a little bit too hot. So that was the first time. So anyway, I'm going to um give the rest of the story so you guys can understand where I'm coming from. But um I'm gonna put a link. I'm going to put a link to the... I'm sorry, baby. Okay, I'm about to feed you. I'm going to put a link to the bottom because I am going to do the GoFundMe. Um, dot com or whatever like that. So these were some of the pictures. Um, when she first came out, she was red. But, um, yeah, she came out five pounds and six ounces. Five pounds and six ounces. And so, um, that's why Matthew wasn't there the first time. Now, I didn't understand everything that was going on with him. I really didn't understand him. So, um, I'm going to call this part one to the story. And then we're going to go into part two, okay? So, again, what I've decided to do is um, I am going to go to the GoFundMe. Will I get anything? I don't know. Um... Yesterday was crazy when I was trying to get things together, but look at my baby. Yeah, so, um, but I said, why not? You ask now, you want that, right? So, so yeah. So, um, so yeah. So I'm going to go because the time is starting to run out. But yeah, so he was not there. Um, I was totally drugged up and everything when they finally got me upstairs to our room i text um my husband a photo of um symphony and i also went ahead and i'm sorry baby okay okay we're gonna get you some milk i text him a photo of symphony and said she's here babe i love you and that's when he texts back and said my girls are safe and he was like okay i'll be there tomorrow like as if nothing happened so, yeah, so this is part one. So, I'm going to come back. I'm going to upload this real quick. And I'm going uh, to come back with part two because I got to tell y'all everything. I'm not holding anything back. And I honestly don't care. Okay. So, I'm about to upload this real quick. All right.